Affinity Photo Beginner's Guide a look at the lighting filter. Hello and welcome to this beginner's look at the lighting filter in both the normal and the live versions. As far as I can tell this filter and how it works has not changed since the update to version 2 of Affinity Photo so it should work in the same way to those still using version 1. I have opened two stock images from Pexels which are fairly similar in that they are images of a man in a darkly lit room. This is not a tutorial about how to light an image correctly, it is a tutorial just showing how the filters work so please bear that in mind. I will use one image and add the filter from the menus and then make some adjustments and then add a levels adjustment layer and alter that. This will be the image with the man with the red hat on. Then using the second image I will use the live filter version and make some adjustments and then add the levels adjustments layer and alter that. So on to editing the man in the red hat image. Before I get started though, I want to look at the lighting of this image. The overall ambient lighting of the image is quite blue and cool. The spotlight on the man's head and face is much warmer and I would guess is from a white or mild yellowish spotlight. With this image or your own image opened, go to the filters menu at the top of the interface and select lighting. This will open the filters adjustment control panel plus a triangular shaped grid on the image. This grid has five lines with various nodes on those lines. The nodes can be clicked and dragged to alter the grid's shape and the effect of the lighting. These same actions can be done from the filters adjustment control panel. I will click and hold the apex and joining point of the triangle and then rotate that grid. Then I will click and hold the node at the middle line at the very end of it and move the triangle grid to the right. I want to better light the man's face on that side. Next I will click and hold the middle node of the central line and move it back and forth. This will alter how bright the lighting will be on the subject being lit. Note also that as I move this node in the control panel the direction circle and the azimuth and elevation settings will also be changing. If I click and hold either of the two outer nodes and move them up and down the width of the lighting effect alters. Note when doing this in the control panel the outer cone slider alters as I move these nodes. If I click and hold either of the inner line nodes moving them up and down it alters the concentration of the light and it will become narrower or wider. Note in the control panel the inner cone slider alters as I move the nodes. That finishes the altering of the grid with the nodes or by some of the control panel adjustments. Next I want to look at the other controls in the control panel. The first adjustment slider is diffuse. This is what the help files says about this adjustment. Sets the level of diffuse scattered light refle reflected from the surface. Higher values reflect more light. In my layman's terms it will make the effect of the lighting brighter or darker. The next adjustment is specular described in the help files like this sets the levels of light reflected from the surface that reflects in a single outgoing direction rather than being diffused to form a highlight or hotspot. 
In my simple terms, it makes the center point of the light origin brighter or darker. The next adjustment is shininess. The help file says it controls the spread of the specular reflection. To me, it looks like it works much like diffuse, but will make the image brighter than diffuse does. Next is a color option. You can click on the color button to open the color picker. The default for the specular light is white. I'll click a few colors to show what effect it has, but we'll return it back to white. The next adjustment is an ambient light slider. The higher the setting, the more the background area will be lit. At 100%, I can now see more of the man's beard and jumper. Next, there is another color setting, this time for the ambient light. I will, after tinkering a bit, return the color back to white. The next few controls are light with a number one and it's on a drop down menu. Then there's an add, copy and remove buttons. You can have multiple lights coming from multiple angles if you want them. I will click on the add button and a new triangular grid appears. Plus the lights number has changed to two. If I move the new grid to under the man's face, I can light up his eyes a bit better. As I alter this new light source setting, the adjustment I used before also changed. If you want to re-edit the first light, use the drop down menu and select the number one. Using the duplicate or remove buttons will do exactly what they say they do. Before moving on to the next option, I will add a third light source. The next control in the panel is called Type and is again a drop down menu. By default it is set on Spot for Spotlight and this will give you the triangular grid we have already looked at. If in the drop down menu I change Spot to Point, you will lose some of the options from the control panel and the triangular grid becomes a circle with a node in its middle. You can click and drag the node to wherever you want the center of the light to be. Plus use a distance slider to alter the circle size. If I change the types drop down menu to directional, you get just one line with one node on it. You can alter the direction of the line and move the node in and out and that's about all you can do with that. I will use the remove button to delete light 2 and light 3. Next there is another color adjustment. This is to change the color of the light itself. Once I have had a play around with the color I will return the color to white. Already mentioned there is a distance slider adjustment which basically alters the distance of the light that goes from the main node. The next section of adjustments are the settings you can alter that affects the nodes and the spread of the lines of the triangular grid which I've pretty much already covered, so I won't go over these again. The lower settings all deal with the texture of the image that the lighting will affect. It works a bit like the displace filter if you know a bit about that option. I admit to not really knowing too much about this, nor when I personally would need it. But if I move the texture slider to the left and right, Hopefully you can see what effect it has. I think a small amount of movement of this slider could work well. I set mine to around minus 20% mark and in the opposite direction 
of the light source. All I need to do now is click the apply button to apply the settings to my image. The lighting filter is one of those annoying filters that the look of the image when you finish making the adjustments is not quite the same after you click the apply button. Things like textures may look harsher or weaker than you thought they would. I then added a levels adjustment and made the white level 70 and the gamma 0.939 and then closed the panel. If I zoom in, hopefully you can see that the, the texture effect better. Now, if I wanted to edit the lighting filter, I couldn't, as using the filter menu version adds a destructive filter, meaning that once they are used, they can't be altered. The level adjustment can be altered as it is a layer in its own right. So double clicking on that levels layer icon in the layers studio will open the adjustment panel again. This is why where they are available and not all filters are available, it's best to use the live filter version rather than the destructive filter version. Moving on to the second image and using the live filters, there are two ways to add a live lighting filter. The first being by using the layers menu at the top of the interface. The lighting filter is in a sub menu of the new live filter layer option in the layers menu. The other way to add a live filter is by clicking on the icon that looks like an hourglass in the bottom of the layers studio. This will add the filter as a child layer of the selected image layer. Other than the fact it is a layer rather than just a filter, it works in the same way as previously explained. Because of this, I won't explain my editing now, but I will add a single light source to the image. When closing the live filter panel, the image looks and is more likely to stay the way it was when you finished editing it, unlike the way the filter version changed after applying the filter. I next added the levels adjustment and made some more adjustments. Now though, if I want to tinker with the lighting filter, I can. I just need to double click on the filters icon in the layer studio to reopen the lighting filter control panel and the triangular grid. I can also turn on and off the visibility of the adjustment layers to see how much each adjustment has affected the original image. Hopefully this helps explain what the lighting filter does and shows you why it is always best to use the live filter version of any filter when there is a live filter version available. Next I want to have a look at doing this on the iPad. Now I'm not going to go over the whole editing thing again. Um, iPad users, if you want to know how the certain options work, I would suggest you look at the sort of PC uh, part of the video and that will explain how they work. I mainly want to explain and show where these particular options are. Now I've opened the same image of the man with the red hat and if I click on the filter menu and open the filters. Now I have mine in sort of icon list form but if I click the three line menu at the top you can toggle that into sort of picture form but I like mine to be the icons so that is how I'm going to leave mine so you just need to scroll down and find the filter that you want you can also if you hold where it says all filters if you click and hold not click tap and hold there 
move down slightly and move to the left it will show all the filters or you can scroll in that way um, so I'm just going to find lighting oh it's, it's just so much easier just to do it from this larger menu it's got to be here somewhere here we go lighting so you have the sort of same triangular grid and you can make the same adjustments now the adjustments that we sort of went over in the PC version some of the options will be at the top of the interface and they're in between the sort of main ones that are on the left and the sort of one main ones that are on the right and they're sort of in the middle now the thing is there are more options in that space than you can actually physically see so you need to sort of tap on that area and then you can get more of these options so you think you've got sort of like um, apply then there's cancel then there's a couple of the color options you have where you can add the different lights with the plus and minus sign and then in between it next to that you have which number light you are on and then we have duplicate then you have where you, the area where you can select where you have spot or point or directional then you get another color option and then you have what is this one that and you have clear fit the width fit the height and split well, I think this mainly is the viewing option so the, some of the options are up there and the adjustments are down here on the left hand side now there are six adjustments if I press and hold the question mark it will display all the various options so the ones I mentioned that are at the top of the interface are listed in the box on the right and then the three boxes that are in the, in the middle of the screen um, the bottom of those three boxes gives you the three or the six adjustments that you have but we only have three adjustments visible and the top one at the moment is ambient and then the next one is specular and the bottom one is shininess now you can see from the icon they're just to the top and right of that icon there's a little white dot and I'm guessing that little white dot sort of de denotes that there is more than one option but if I go to the top one and click on the icon that icon will change that adjustment to diffuse and if I tap on the middle one specular will become texture and the bottom one which is currently shininess will become opacity so you have to click on the various adjustments to find the one that you are after so all the adjustments mentioned in the PC version of the tutorial are all there you just sort of need to find out where they are whether they are at the top of the screen and somewhere in this movable area or on one of these adjustments down the left and then just click on one of them to scroll to find which one you are after okay now that we've had a look add in the destructive version of the lighting filter on the iPad have a very quick look at adding the live version so just come to the filter menu and then at the top here where it says all filters just underneath that it says add live filters and if I just tap on the button that will turn on the listing for live filters so the only filters that come in the live version will be listed 
so it's just a case of finding lighting and much like before it will work in exactly the same way and all the options will be like I described earlier the difference now being is that in the layers menu and studio you now have lighting as a layer so it is non-destructive so that is quickly how you add the live version of the lighting filter so basically that is the very quick look at how to get the options in the iPad version so well, it just leaves me to say that I will leave links to the images that I've used in this video in the description for this video and thank you for your support and goodbye